<laughs> Hi. Welcome uh, to the Front End Web Developer Nano Degree Q&A session. In this session, you will discover what you can do with this Nano Degree. I am Gauji. And I'm Krishna. And we're joined by Nathan, a current student in the Front End Web Developer Nano Degree, and Ben, who is a graduate of this Nano Degree. Um, Krishna, you want to talk about yourself? Uh, sure. So we're both course managers here at Udacity, um, and we help sort of support the nano degree experience. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, what are we going to talk about in the next hour? So in the next hour, we'll talk about and give an overview of the nano degree, and we'll talk to Ben and Nathan about how how their experience has been in the nano degree. I. It is flicked. Sorry, we're just making sure this runs as smoothly as possible. So we'll talk about um, how Ben and Nathan's experience in the nano degree has been uh, so far for Nathan and how it was overall for Ben. And in addition to learning about their experiences in pods, we'll also see some of the projects that they have built. Um, yeah, and so after we sort of have conversations with both Ben and Nathan will have an opportunity to uh, answer any questions that you may have. So yeah, if there's a question that's been asked that you really want answered, we encourage you to uh, plus it uh, in the Q&A interface. You can also feel free to ask your own question if it's not covered already. Um, and then we'll, we'll, answer, we'll try to answer as many as possible. Uh, we'll also be sharing a discount coupon for you to sign up for the nano degree uh, later on. Mm -hmm. So to get started with what a nano degree is, in this nano degree, you will be learning by working on a series of projects. This particular one has six projects that take you from HTML, CSS to learning about JavaScript, object-oriented JavaScript, and finally also testing what you have built. Uh, it's an industry-approved program in the sense that the courses that support the nano degree have been built with our industry partners, such as Google, at and Hack Reactor, and GitHub. Um, so what happens once you sign up uh, All right. for a so, nano degree? So yeah, so you're you're able to sign up for a nano degree at the beginning of the month. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually, right now we planned on having sign up start today, but we're running into some issues with our form software. So we we hope to get it up to you as soon as possible. You're allowed to sign up uh, for about a week. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, starting as soon as possible to uh, the middle of next week. Um, and then you you basically go through the entire program with other students who signed up at the same time that you did. So what this does is you sort of have the same deadlines for each of the six projects that you have to complete. Uh, and so you, you'll be working at roughly the same pace. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and you'll also be able to interact with these students who you're working with at the same pace. Mm -hmm. uh, so you'll interact with students mostly through uh, a form system that we have, and there's also a live chat system that we've set up as well yep. that will allow you to interact with anyone who's online at the same time that you are. And in addition to your peers, you have coaches, like Krishna and myself, supporting you through this nano degree on the forums via one-on-one -on -one chat appointments, and also through office hours, which is a live hangout session like the one we're having right now. Yeah. So uh, besides learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which are like the building blocks of becoming a front-end web developer, we'll also have events geared towards uh, your professional development, such as improving your resume and your LinkedIn profile, and just extending your network, uh, and also preparing for interviews. Yeah, so definitely in addition to learning programming, we'll try to give you the tools to be able to get a job. Mm -hmm. So with that, let's talk to Ben about how his experience has been. Ben, do you want to talk about yourself a little bit? Just explain your background. Yeah, sure. Um, so um, I'm a recent graduate, graduated um, from the nano degree um, late December. Uh, my background is in mechanical engineering. Uh, so I graduated with a bachelor's in um, 2012 and have been working for about two and a half years now as a mechanical engineer. Mm -hmm. um, Programming-wise, I started programming in um, April 2014, so almost a year now. Um, that was mostly in Python, and then I started learning um, HTML, CSS, JavaScript maybe two or three months before I started the nano degree in, um, in October. Okay. 
So uh, what made you decide to choose the nano degree over other options? So I assume you were looking at other options, right? Right, yeah. So uh, when I first started programming and realized that that's what I wanted to do, I looked at a couple options. The first most obvious one was uh, you know, going back to school, getting another bachelor's. Um, so that's what I was actually planning on doing. Um, but that was going to be, you know, tens of thousands of dollars, and I was going to be in school for another four years, probably, maybe three. Mm -hmm. um, and then I found out about um, the, all these coding boot camps that were popping up. So then I decided I was going to do that, because those are, you know, 12 weeks about, and only like ten or $15,000. And then I found out about the nano degree, and I wouldn't have to leave my job. It was, you know, much more affordable, and... You know, I was in the first group, so it wasn't really, uh, there were no statistics yet on what the, you know, result would be, but yeah, it was definitely worth a shot, and I'm happy I did it. Cool. So, yeah, what were, so, as you said, you, there were no statistics of, like, how, I guess, good the program was. What were your expectations going in, going into it? Um, you know, I guess I don't know exactly what I expected. I, I had taken a couple Udacity courses before, and I really liked the way they're formatted, I think. Um, it makes it really easy to kind of pick up new concepts with the, you know, short video structure and you have quizzes pretty often to kind of re reinforce what you know. So I guess I was encouraged by, um, you know, my experience with the classes in the past and that's kind of what w pushed me to take the nano degree. Awesome. Uh, can you describe what you have learned through the program? Sure, yeah, so I learned, um, well, I guess the basic, you know, skills of front-end development, JavaScript, HTML, CSS. Um, one big part of the program is kind of, um, and a big part of being a front-end web developer is uh, being able to take a PDF or some kind of image, a mock-up of a website, and turn that into code. Um, so that's something I've learned, how to, basically how to break that down, um, I learned more about um, object-oriented programming, specifically in JavaScript, and the different ways to do that. Um, and I learned a lot about basically reading documentation and kind of learning new technologies and basically how to keep learning. Awesome. Uh, do you have a project you would like to share with us uh, that you worked on through the nano degree? And, yeah, sure. And explain to us what you did for that project. Yeah, so um, so this project was the uh, fifth project in the nano degree. Um, it was basically it's built um, with JavaScript, HTML, CSS. Um, it uses a JavaScript framework called Knockout, which um, basically helps you kind of organize your code and takes away some of the little details that you would normally have to think about, so you can kind of think more about the big picture of what you want to do. Uh, so this. This um, application is clear. It's a map. It loads with a couple locations in Boston, um, and it's getting basically data from Instagram's API. So you can go click on a location, click on the uh, Instagram button, and then you get recent pictures that people have taken at that place. And um, and basically the the assignment to begin with was making a full page map using the Google's API, and then getting some third party data. So the third party API you chose was Instagram, correct? Yep. OK. Yeah, so how easy was this for you to do? Like, uh, did you, what sort of problems did you run into while trying to, to finish your project? Yeah, I think the most challenging thing was other than having the you know, basic building blocks of JavaScript, HTML, CSS, um, you know, you really kind of were starting from zero. Um, at least I was. I had never used Google Maps API. I had never used Instagram's API. Um, I had never used Knockout. So really, the beginning was just a lot of you know um, going through documentation, trying to understand how these things work, um, going through tutorials, and then kind of once I had a kind of general enough picture of what I was trying to do and how all these things work, putting those all together. So did the did the course that comes with the project um, did it sort of tell you these things that you that you said you were doing like reading up on documentation or stuff or was that sort of things that you had to put together on your own? 
Um, hmm, I guess... I guess some of it I had to put together on my own, but I think kind of going through the courses, you sort of learn that this is really part of being a developer. Um, you know, you're never going to, I guess, be handed everything you need to do in your job, and, you know, if you need to learn a new technology, that's what you do. You go to the documentation, you read through it, um, you take some code samples, you know, try them out, and kind of just figure it out. Awesome. Go ahead. Uh, all right. <laughs> One last question. So to me, um, so I like reading documentation personally, um, and that's one of the reasons why I like to program. Um, for you, uh, is that something that uh, at the beginning that you didn't like, or is that something that you actually really enjoy? Um, you know, I think at first it's kind of when you, you haven't really... Um, you know, read any documentation yet and you're pretty new to it, I think it's pretty intimidating. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it can be pages and pages of, you know, new things you've never seen before and um, just trying to even figure out what, you know, the smallest part of it does can be kind of overwhelming, but I think um, once you see enough of it, you kind of start to see the pattern and things kind of become more familiar and... Um, you know, I, I still wouldn't say I love reading documentation, um, but I think I like it a little more than when I started. Uh-huh. Cool. <laughs> awesome. I have one more question. You learned about a lot of things through the nano degree. Which ones do you think you are an expert at, and which ones are the ones that you think have an area that you can improve on? Sure. I think, I think my strongest skill is JavaScript. Um, just kind of the, the programming languages just, I guess, make a lot of sense to me. Um, I guess maybe being an engineer, that kind of logical thinking. Um, I think the thing I could work on the most is still my CSS. Um, I know enough at this point really to say, you know, I want something to look like this. I can pretty much make it do that. Um, or, you know, see some mock-up. I can make it look like that. But as far as making it really... Um, like modular and maintainable and kind of things you would want to be doing in a um, the production environment, um, like in a job. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I'm 100% there yet, but I think I'm getting there. Okay, cool. So, yeah, how much do we cover CSS in the nano degree? It's covered mostly in the first course, okay. um, where you learn about HTML and CSS, and throughout the nano degree, you're going to use these basics that you have gotten in with the first project and keep using them. Uh, ben, would you like to add anything to that? Um, anything about, about the my skills or...? CSS, and how did you find uh, the experience through the nano degree with learning about that? Okay. Um, yeah, I think learning CSS, I think... Um, I mean, I think the nano degree does a good job. Um, you know, it kind of, I guess, shows you the basic sort of, you know, properties you need to know and um, basically to get something to look the way you want and also the resources to go find, um, you know, how to do something if you don't know. So, yeah, I think the nano degree does a good job. I just still need a little more practice, I think. For sure, yeah. So I think we have a couple of questions uh, about sort of the the end of your experience and what you're doing now. So yeah, pretty much, um, what are you doing now? Uh, now that you've graduated, and did you think that uh, that two hundred dollars a month was was worth it? Um, well, I'm gonna say I definitely think it was worth it. Um, so when I was working as a mechanical engineer, I was working in Columbus, Ohio. Um, and actually, my original plan was to basically continue working and look for a job while working, but I actually felt really confident after the end of the nano degree, um, and plus I knew I wanted to actually move back home to the East Coast, look for a job, um, you know, New York, um, Boston, D.C., somewhere like that. Um, so I actually yeah, just left my job um, like a week or two ago, and I've been yeah, starting my job search. Great, cool. Um, awesome. 
Do you uh, have anything else? Yeah. If you were to restart uh, this degree, what would you do differently this time? Um, I think there are probably two things I'd do differently. Um, one would really try to be more involved in the community, in like the forums and um, the uh, chat group we had, um, because there were a lot of you know really great resources there. Um, a lot of people who could help you out and a really the opportunity to help people. Um, so I think part of that was tough just because I was working at the same time while doing the nano degree and you know I wanted to get the projects done so it was just a balancing act. And then I think the other thing is um, I wish I maybe planned my projects out a little bit more. I kinda had a tendency to really just get enough of an idea where I felt like I could really start coding and I'd just kind of go for it and, you know, I'd run into a bunch of, you know, problems and the code would get messy and I'd have to refactor it, you know, a bunch of times. Um, whereas maybe if I just kind of planned it out and structured it a little more from the beginning, I could have avoided those problems. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, yeah, cool. I think that's all we have for mm -hmm. for you, Ben. Thanks for, uh, yeah, thanks for chatting Thank with us. Thank you for joining us. And you'll be around again for, for questions later. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Um, and we will now talk to Nathan, who is a current student in the Nano Degree. Uh, Nathan started the Nano Degree in November of 2014. And before we do that, I believe there is a discount coupon code that Kathleen Chang, one of our coaches here, is going to share with us. So I'm just going to make sure she gets a chance to post that. And I will highlight that by selecting it as a question. Give us just a moment to find it in your questions. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. I just selected that, and you can use that coupon code. And well, I'll just keep it up for a few more seconds. So people just leave can it up it. for now. Yeah. Okay, and we can start talking to Nathan. Yep. Uh, Nathan, will you tell us a little bit about your background, and that's how we can get started? Sure. Um, I, I, I work for AT&T, uh, partnered with Udacity on the front-end nano degree. Um, uh, AT&T made a big push to make sure that their employees knew about the nano degree. That's how I found out about it, big company-wide email blast. Um, I've been very interested in web development work um, for many years. I wrote my first web page when I was like 14. Um, and uh, I, my skills were very basic coming into the nano degree. Basic HTML, basic CSS, um, and very basic JavaScript. Um, I had really just started teaching myself JavaScript and jQuery in the few months leading up to coming into the nano degree. I have no real coding background. My all my employment experience prior to this has been in customer service, really. Okay. Cool. So, uh, yeah, what made you decide to choose the nano degree? Um, part of it was, of course, that uh, AT and T had partnered with Udacity to build this. Um, I was really impressed with the uh, the presentation of the program as a degree by industry. Um, I think that's one of the big taglines you guys have been using. Um, and uh, reading up on, uh, you know, the, its background with uh, the, in the foundation of it, and I said, I've always really been interested in in, um, in web development. Uh, I had built several tools in the months leading up to it for, you know, for us to use at work internally um, that I knew would be a lot better if I had more experience. Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, with the code. Okay. So speaking about getting more experience, uh, could you talk a little bit about what you've learned so far? Um, the the in the so yeah so I guess that, so how many projects in the nano degree have you completed? Um, what sort of things did you learn while doing those projects? Um, of the six projects, I've actually just turned in, um, I've now turned in five of them. I'm working on uh, project five, which is the probably the biggest project of the group. It's the, the one that Ben just demonstrated. Um, 
the uh, they start out fairly simple, you know, working um, the design uh, HTML and CSS from mockup, like again, like Ben mentioned, um, some JavaScript, uh, basic JavaScript intro to, to jQuery, which was very interesting to me because, like I said, I had, I had just started learning that. Um, I feel like my jQuery is has got much better. Um, actually, working on the last two projects that I did, which were actually projects four and six. Um, Object-oriented JavaScript and working with the HTML canvas was a lot of fun. Um, and uh, I'm really looking forward to working with uh, uh, Ajax and the, uh, the APIs that we'll be working with in Project 5, which is basically the, the building blocks of the modern web. Awesome. Do you have a project that you would like to share with us? Uh, share your screen, and uh, you can talk about what you did for this project as well. Sure. The, what I'm going to show you is uh, the third project in the nano degree, uh, which centers around uh, object-oriented JavaScript. Actually, the project is to build a Frogger clone. Um, so let me start out with a character select screen that I designed. and um, Everything you see here on the screen is a separate object that we coded uh, in JavaScript. Um, and how they interact with, you know, with the environment, you know, um, collision detection is built into it, um, and everything is animated using the HTML canvas, which is, uh, you know, a very new, uh, fairly new technology for the web. It allows lots of uh, uh, very fine animation, um, drawing, um, you know, uh, all sorts of uh, image manipulation can be done right here on the canvas. Um, I really love the challenge of this in trying to work out, you know, how to make, you know, for instance, this character appear like they're actually in the water. I have to actually draw the character twice on the screen, underwater, and then a portion of them above the water, and calculate, you know, how this guy over here is bobbing up and down in the water. Uh, at, Every frame, um, it was it was fairly challenging um, to to myself, you know, to to get all of those things working together. Um, uh, kind of the opposite of the problem that Ben had, where he he would just start coding. I actually sat and stared at the uh, at uh, my code editor for so long, with so many ideas about where I could go with this project um, that I, I almost felt. I, could, I couldn't start coding for so long because I didn't know where to start. And finally, I just forced myself, all right, let's work on, you know, drawing people in the water and then go from there. It was a lot of fun. Really awesome project. Uh, I know we enjoyed playing with it. And, yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, we were evaluating it. So since you are in the nano degree, I was wondering, uh, what is your weekly schedule like? Um, how many hours do you work per week? How what are they you, distributed? Yeah. What do you spend them on? Yeah, walk us through a week. Mm -hmm. um, again, I work uh, customer service, and uh, my hours are, are never normal. <laughs> um, I, uh, my, I spend most of my time um, working on the nano degree in the mornings um, before I would go into work. Um, usually try and spend about an hour or so watching uh, the uh, the video classes that I haven't watched or that you know that are next in the, in the classes, um, a lot of that time too might be spent doing you know maybe some outside research just to get a little bit more in depth information you know like when we cover um, request animation frame to for the animation on project three that I just showed you, uh, went and looked up some more information on the Mozilla Developer Network on on how that exactly worked. Um, and uh, once I get into the coding, I'll usually spend um, any any free time I have, you know, trying to trying to code it up, um, test it out locally, um, push it to GitHub. Um, one of the other great things I loved about the course actually um, was kind of the way that it not only taught us the coding, but taught us how to kind of be a developer. Um, Mm -hmm. With the uh, the courses like on GitHub and testing and um, the, the you know the unit testing that comes in Project Six, um, 
You know, so I, I, usually, I would spend probably, like I said, an hour in the mornings, then maybe another hour in the evenings um, when I get home. The, uh, the estimate was 10 hours a week to be able to dedicate, and that, that's a good estimate of the amount of time that you, you might want to be able to dedicate. It doesn't have to be all at one time. You know, you could probably do it very easily on weekends if you've got that much free time at one time. I have three kids, so I couldn't put together that much time all at once. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you you were talking about how you spend most of your time sort of like one hour, two hour chunks. Do you think, yeah, like how how is that working out for you versus if you if you had more time at a time to like five hour chunks? So yeah, it it works out for for me. It works out really well because of the way that the uh, the videos are broken up are there in segments, um, usually broken up with like a quiz or a response that's needed in between them. Um, uh, I really liked the way that worked out um, because I could very easily come, like it wasn't like I had to try and find where was I halfway through this 30 minute video. Um, you know, I would start the beginning of the next three to six minute video um, and, uh, and wa learn that material um, and then move on. Uh, it works out really well for me when I'm on breaks at uh, work. I can listen to you know Cameron talk about. Um, Cameron is one of the video instructors um, for a lot of the JavaScript classes. Mm -hmm. um, I can listen to him talk about the APIs for you know the New York Times and Wikipedia just while I'm on break or on lunch or something. Cool. So I think one thing that we haven't really mentioned throughout our time with both uh, you and Ben is the community aspect. So uh, yeah, could you talk a little bit about uh, whether you participate in the community, uh, in the forums, how often you go to office hours? I participated in the forums uh, a lot. Um, I, I loved going there. There's a real good sense of community um, among all the people in the nano degree. Um, the, the forums are broken up by uh, by class, um, so that I'm going to be interacting with uh, you know the people that are in the same started at the same time. We're going to be working on probably about the same projects that I am. Where Ben would be in a different group than I was because he started before I did, and his 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 class is probably going to uh, be working on different projects than than mine would. I really loved to help out as many people as I could on the forums. I kind of prided myself on having like the second highest post total. Uh, for my cohort in Piazza, um, and uh, really looking forward to the new forum software you guys are, are debuting. Um, I think that's that's really exciting. Um, the, the, chat, the, the chat the chat is pretty awesome uh, as well. If I needed an immediate answer, I could pop in there, and there would be um, you know somebody like Ben is in there all the time, and I could get answers from him or just somebody to review my project and uh, help me out with it. Um, the uh, Michael Wales is in there all the time, who's the curriculum manager for the manager for, for this nano degree. Coaches are in there all the time. It's really easy to get a, a response if you need one. Office hours, as, as I mentioned, my, my hour my work hours are really weird, so I haven't been able to attend many of them. Um, I've watched them afterward, um, and they've they've often been very, very helpful, especially um, uh, for like a project four, which was all about website optimization, and had me ha banging my head against a wall at times. Uh, those, those office hours were a lot of fun. Awesome. So I guess can you talk more about how helping or has helping others via forum posts helped you? It's helped me. Um, kind of in my research, um, a lot of times if I see a question. Um, I don't just want to, and this is partially because from my, uh, my my customer service background. I never just want to provide an answer. I want to be able to tell you how kind of how I got that answer. Um, you know, so I would often I could just tell somebody, here's how you do this, but it, I, I think it's going to be a lot better a for me, b for them if I can say, here's how you do this. Here's where you can get more information about it, like from the Mozilla Developer Network or from the the Git documentation, um, which uh, Git can be really, uh, really difficult to understand at first. Um, so the the documentation can really can really help with that when you're able to to sit down and read it. Great. 
All right. Uh, do you have any other questions for for Nathan right now? No. Do you? Um, I think we have one more. So, like Ben, uh, we'd like to ask you if you think that that two hundred dollars a month is worth it for you, uh, and why or why not? It, it definitely is. Um, the, like I said, the if nothing else, the uh, kind of the, the networking aspect has been a lot, has been has been very helpful. Um, he said, I'm, I'm currently employed by AT&T, so I'm not really actively looking for work, but I've been able to network with a lot of other AT&T employees, um, you know, so that if there is a, is a chance for me to, to leverage these skills within the company, I'm definitely able to do that. Um, the, uh, the skills that I'm learning, like I said, I, I are, like, like Ben, I'm already much more confident in my ability to, um, to build better web applications than I was beforehand. Um, I, I feel, again, like I'm going to build better looking, better running applications with the understandings that I have now after going through, you know, uh, these projects. I'll, uh, be faster at coding them now, thanks to um, a lot of the uh, the things that we went through, like uh, with Git and with um, and with the unit testing. You know, we'll make things a lot easier um, to to build. As simple as that. Oh, and build tools. Gulp is going to save my life one day. <laughs> hey. Um, yeah. Well, do you thank you. Nope. Do you? Right. Nope. Well, Thank you, Nathan and Ben. Uh, Nathan and Ben are both going to join us to answer questions that you all have posted. So uh, keep them coming and keep voting them up. I am going to start with the first question that is here. All right. What what percentage of nano degree graduates have found employment in their desired field? Uh, so I think for this question, we think it's a little bit early to sort of say. So um, Ben here has graduated, but we so he graduated after starting in October of 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, we we plan on most students being in the nano degree for for six to nine months. I think Actually, for nine five, nine to twelve. Nine to twelve. Okay. Yes. So we'll we'll definitely have better numbers um, then, which is quite a ways from from now. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I think uh, once we have those numbers, we'll definitely uh, want to to be upfront and open about them. But until then, yep. we can't really say okay. too much either way. Thank you, Krishna. Okay, next one that has been upvoted a lot is: Do tech companies, both startup and established, understand the concept of a nano degree, as evidenced by hiring statistics? So, all of these nano degrees that we have have been built with industry partners. So they have that industry approval while building them itself. And as we are seeing from some of our early graduates like Ben, uh, seems like things are going well. Uh, through the nano degree, they, uh, students do build a portfolio, mm -hmm. which they can show off. And it has definitely helped um, at least the early graduates that we have seen. Yes. Uh, and as Krishna said, we'll have a better understanding of how these things are going um, as months roll on, and we have more graduates coming out of the program. So yeah, definitely as time progresses, um, we're going to get more aggressive for sure mm -hmm. about uh, career-related events, stuff like that, the improving your resume, improving your LinkedIn mm -hmm. profile, networking sort of things to, to try to help our students out. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Can kind of talk towards this one as well. Um, AT and T specifically partnered with Udacity to build this, um, to design this uh, this course. AT and T basically said, "Here's what we expect our front end web developers to be able to do um, this set of skills," and then Udacity sort of built the course towards that. Um, if I recall correctly, um, AT and T. Uh, off, is offering internships. I don't know if that's an in, if they have to be internal or, or not, but specifically offering internships to graduates of the nano degree program, um, which again was another uh, reason for me to try and take it, which was a pretty awesome, I think, uh, hedge bet on, on their part that this is going to be successful for them. Cool. Thanks for adding that, Nathan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, moving on to the next question. Mm -hmm. Let me select that. 
So uh, is this nano degree for me? I am 38 years old and would like to change my job. I know something about HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and Python, and I'd like to become a website developer as a freelancer. Is this course good for me, or should I choose an individual path? Um, so I think that this actually sounds pretty similar to Nathan's path, like what mm-hmm. Nathan's going through right now. So yeah, would you like to speak, uh, answer this question? Um, yeah. Uh... So that's basically my background. Um, I'm not as familiar with Python as, as Arthur here is, um, but that it it helped me to build those skills um, to the point where, like I said, I feel like I can comfortably now build um, build build a web app, uh, especially once I finish with Project Five. Um, uh, it, it, absolutely, Arthur. It, it, it would it would definitely be a good path for you to take. Cool. Um, I I would just add that um, we we expect people from all sorts of backgrounds to to do the nano degree, and with the the ten hour per week sort of guideline, we definitely take into account that there may be other things going on in your life. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, our next question is, what's the stuff that the course doesn't cover but is needed in practice? Meaning, what do I need to do beyond the course to be competitive? Ben, as a graduate of this program, do you want to talk about that? Sure. Yeah, I think, I don't know if there's necessarily anything you need to do. Um, I personally... Um, I mean, I haven't found a job yet, but it's looking pretty good. Um, I started my search maybe two or three weeks ago, and last week I had five interviews. So um, they, I guess kind of actually going to the um, maybe the other question too is, I mean, employers seem to be valuing it. They seem to uh, be at least interested in, you know, what the nano degree has to offer. Um, but I think some things you could do that would help. Um, a lot of things they want to see, they want to see that you can work with other developers, so maybe I think contributing to an open source project would be a good thing, and also working on like in, on an existing code base. Um, that would definitely help you out, I think. Um, if there's a specific company you know you want to work for, look up what technologies they use and try to learn those and build something with them. Um, anything you can really do, you know, Outside is only going to help you, but I don't know if you necessarily, uh, you know, need to to find a job. Okay. Do you have anything to add to that, Chris? Uh, I would just add that so uh, the nano degree in the nano degree, you're working by yourself for all of these projects. Mm-hmm. So um, if you have any opportunities to work sort of on a team or with other people, that that will definitely help a lot as well. And that's something that you don't get. Yep. With well, you projects. do have the community aspect of yes. it, um, but you are still working on individual projects. Yeah, you're submitting each project. Of, it should be your own work. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. So the next question I have is, how would a successful completion of this program compare in abilities to someone who gets a four-year undergraduate degree in computer science? All right, uh, I'll take this one since, uh, so my background is, so I'm a math major, but I pretty much went through my uh, undergrad college's entire CS curriculum when I was there. I would say that the, the deg- a degree in CS is different from uh, a nano degree. So first of all, with a nano degree, you don't quite have the amount of time that you do in college. So in college, um, I didn't really have any uh, commitments time-wise. I didn't have a job. Um, I was just doing nothing for most of the <laughs> besides taking classes. So there was a lot of time <laughs> to sort of uh, to sort of get deep into computer science. Um, the things that you learn uh, in an undergrad program in CS are pretty theoretical. Um, mm-hmm. I learned a lot about like how programs work. Um, so, for instance, like how does an array work? Uh, how does a dictionary work? Mm-hmm. How does a string work? I didn't really learn so much about specific languages like JavaScript, specific frameworks like jQuery. Um, those are things that you sort of have to do on your own uh, mm-hmm. in a CS degree. 
you don't really learn how to program. So something that I had to learn coming out of school was how to use things like Git, how to, like how to be uh, how to work with people. Um, something also I had to learn, and those are the things that we try to teach you in the nano degree. Okay. I, I would agree with that. Like so that's like I mentioned earlier. That's been one of the things that I, I realized very late was like that we were being taught how to be developers with with Git and the the unit testing and, and everything that was involved. Yeah, um, I think that's about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next one is, if you already know some of the skills or have a lot of time, is it possible to skip ahead and do all of the tasks, thus completing the nano degree faster? That is, in the pace that you're comfortable with. Yes, definitely. And Ben is an example of that. Uh, the nano degree at about 10 hours a week, we schedule it to be something of a 9 to 12 month uh, long duration, mm -hmm. and then graduated from the nano degree um, three months into it. So, um, yes, you definitely can skip ahead and work at your own pace. Yeah, and I think um, I can add to that. Um, yeah, pretty much you can just, you know, you, there are these classes associated with all the projects, but you know, if you already have these skills, um, you can just jump right in. So, uh, actually, a good amount of the time for me was really going through the classes and, um, you know, learning the skills I needed to do the project. So, um, yeah, if you're if you're strong with you know JavaScript, HTML, CSS, um, yeah, you can really just kind of hit the ground running. Awesome. And I'd just like to mention, I just said that the front-end web developer nano degree is a duration of 9 to 12 months. That actually is another one. Uh, for this one, we have scheduled it for about 6 to 9 months, just to make sure we got those things right. Cool. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Next question. Yep. All right. So let me select that. So yeah, how important did you find the coaching and other help compared with the taking the, compared with taking the course without coaching as you did before nano degrees existed? Okay, uh, Nathan or Ben, you have experienced it. Would you like to talk more about this question? Yes, yeah, uh, I'll take that one. Um, you know, I think I think really the the biggest difference for me was really having just in general having the community. Um, and that really means the other students and the instructors. Um, you know, so pretty much if you have a question or you're confused on something, um, there's pretty much a million different places you can go to get help. Um, you know, whereas, you know, when you're taking class on your own, um, pretty much Google is your only friend there, um, which, you know, usually you can get you the answer, but... Um, and even if it can, I think having the other students there, or instructors, to kind of explain things helps you, um, I guess, really absorb it better and kind of, instead of saying, oh, I found, you know, this answer on, um, you know, some coding website like Stack Overflow and copying and pasting the, you know, code into your program, um, you really get a better understanding of why things are working the way they are and, um, you know, what you can do in the future to... Um, maybe avoid that problem or um, just generally how to, you know, program better. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Ben. So the next one we have is, I'm selecting it. All right. So how can we add this nano degree on our resume? Would we, do we get a certificate or something similar to that? So you can add this to the education section of your resume, and you can just mention it as a front-end web developer nano degree with Udacity and the duration that it took for you. Mm -hmm. And for each of the projects that you complete, you do get a verified certificate. Each of your projects is evaluated by um, an evaluator. <laughs> <laughs> yes, an evaluator. <laughs> <laughs> and um, since it's verified, you do get a verified certificate for that, and at okay. the end for your nano degree after you complete. Yes, okay. sounds good. Okay. Next question, quick one. Yeah. So 
can I do multiple nano degrees with a single two hundred dollars subscription, or would the or is the cost two hundred dollars per nano degree? So it is two hundred dollars per month for a nano degree. Yes. And I I would recommend signing up for one at a time. Uh, just because you have this 10-hour commitment and you want to make sure you are giving the degree as much as you can so to get as much out of it. Right, so if you have the time to do multiple nano degrees, we recommend that you just spend more time on, the, on, on one, uh, concentrate on that, and then maybe move on to another one if that's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, looking for another question. Okay. Uh, Sure. Okay, there we go. How much personal help do we get from instructors? What's the turnaround for instructors to answer questions? Ben, Nathan, one of you want to take this one? Um, sure, I can take this one. Uh, I think it depends on, I guess, where you go for help, but I mean, I just know personally from seeing the forums, uh, I think maybe the average response time is I don't know, maybe like 15 minutes or something like that. It's pretty quick. Um, not necessarily all of the answers will be um, from an instructor. A lot of the time students will come in, and then um, the instructor can kind of come in later and um, endorse the student's answer saying they agree with this and this is right, which happens fairly often. Usually there's someone who is, um, you know, further ahead of you and has been through this, and they kind of can help you through the answer. So... Um, yeah, you can get answers uh, fairly quickly. I, I, I agree. Um, more often than not, the person that's going to respond to a request is going to be another student, usually. Um, usually with the, um, with the correct answer. Like, so you, you, you'll, while we're all generally going to be doing the um, proceeding at the same pace. There might be students that are like have completed that project but are, are going to be able to provide you know what their experience was with it or um, in general like they, they try not to provide direct answers. They're not going to say this is you know the the way that you should format this function. They're going to say you should look at it from this angle or look at this method or something you know. Um, the instructors will usually um, come in and say yep you know he's right on. He's right on track. Um, the instruct the coaches are also available for one on ones, um, so that if you if you need you know more in depth uh, and more in depth explanation than what you can just get from the from the forum, that will also be available for you. Awesome. Thank you, Nathan. And then um, I'm going to move to another question. I heard that. Oh, let me select it first. I heard that this degree is free of charge. We have to pay only if we want to get certificates. Is this true? We would love to hear the answer, yes. All right, so uh, I guess, uh, so all the course materials, so each project in the nano degree is tied to a certain course on our site. Viewing the course material is, is free, um, mm -hmm. always has been. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can definitely view that for free, go through the videos on your own time. Uh, so what is it free? Uh, you don't get uh, an evaluation for the projects you work on, and eventually you get that verified certificate that says you have earned this nano degree. Yes, and also uh, the forums. One-on-one uh, -on -one chat, -on -one chat appointments and office hours. And um, having your projects evaluated. Yes. Yeah, okay. Cool. But the course material is free, um, and you do have Google to help you if that is what you want to do. Yes. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, Nathan. Wait. I'm just looking to find a question that has a lot of upvotes. Um, how about the top one? Oh, let me this one? Yeah, sure. All right. Let me select that. As a person who already has a job within the industry as a, ju a junior position and wants to improve his or her skills, would this be a good fit? So yeah, this is a pretty tough question for I think us to answer. I think that's something that you'll have to judge for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, what I would recommend you do is you could either sign up for a free trial. So if you if you enroll, um, you get seven days to cancel your enrollment and uh, not be charged. 
within those seven days, you can like look at what each project sort of has you do. Um, and if you personally think that you already know all those skills, then obviously you're not going to improve that much by, by doing these projects. If you think there are things that you can learn from doing these projects, though, then I think that it would be worth it for sure. Yep, I, I agree. Thanks, Prisna. OK. All right. Um, OK, yeah, this one. OK. OK, so it seems that the course will run uh, three to four months at $200 a month, which is $600 to $800 total. Personally, a person who is unemployed may not be able to manage this much money. Do you provide any scholarships? As we don't have scholarships in place right now, but as far as I know, we're working towards them. Mm -hmm. So uh, hang in there. Yeah, so uh, we offer information about scholarships on the frequently asked questions section mm -hmm. of our site. Um, uh, and let me, we'll get Kathleen Chang to post that link sure. uh, <laughs> as a question so you can go see it. Yeah, so I think it's just udacity.com slash FAQ, but we'll get, we'll get a real link to you mm -hmm. soon. Thank you. Thanks, Kathleen. All right, okay. uh, next one. Wait, what's the next one? Sure, we can do that okay. one. Okay, let's go. Is Udacity planning to start a nano degree on teaching courses like Java and Python? I heard that those programming skills are the, are the most in demand in the industry. Will Udacity market graduates to companies for job openings? All right, so um, of our nano degrees, so we have the front end one, which is uh, mostly HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Mm -hmm. We have data analyst, which I think is mostly, yeah, it's mostly in Python. Mm -hmm. So that one, we, um, we're marketing uh, students to sort of become junior data analysts, I think, mm -hmm. or, yeah. Um, and that's all, almost all in Python because, so we tailor um, the curriculum to the language that real, that real data scientists, data analysts will actually use, and a big language in the data science community is definitely Python, so that's why that one's Python, and that's why the front end one is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, we tailor the curriculum for the language that is most suitable. So. Uh, data analysts is in Python. Um, full stack, I think, is partly in Python. I believe so. If not mostly in Python. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, we're definitely we definitely have offerings in yeah. in general purpose programming languages. And then to have a nano degree to teach Java and Python, we are launching the Intro to Programming nano degree. Mm -hmm. um, as we mentioned before, we are working on a bug on our new forum system. But as soon as we are you get that resolved, uh, anyone can enroll into that nano degree as well. So that would be a programming basics nano degree. Yes. Um, and then I think the last part of the question is, will Udacity market graduates to companies for job openings? And the answer is definitely yes, we, we hope to. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you, Rajnikanth, for the question. And I'm sorry I've not thanked some of you for asking those questions, but thank you. Yes. <laughs> Uh, uh, I just want to point out that Kathleen did post the link uh, for uh, the scholarship question that was asked. All right, we can uh, we can answer the top one actually. Yeah. That one? Yep. Right. Let's go. Will there be an advanced nano degree courses building upon the current or future courses to make students experts in skills industry is looking for? Once the skills are attained, is Udacity planning uh, to help students get jobs? All right. So I think that um, it depends what your definition of advanced or expert is. So um, for the front end, web developer and degree specifically, we've been adding courses to sort of fill in gaps that students have identified. Mm -hmm. so, so like jQuery, responsive web design, um, responsive web images. Those are courses that were added, that have been added over the past few months to sort of fill in uh, tiny gaps to sort of increase the breadth of, of the nano degree. As far as becoming an expert in something is, though, um, I feel like the best way, so to become, a, yeah, to become an expert at something um, requires very specific domain knowledge. Our nano degree is tailored to sort of get you um, your started first job, on this new get you started. Career path. So, yeah, I think going into industry and into something that you're really interested in is still the best way to become an expert in something. 
And I guess to answer the second part of, the, of your question, which uh, once the skills are attained, is Udacity planning to help students get jobs? Yes, definitely so. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. OK. Um, and then the first question you see right now is the link Kathleen posted. I just wanted to talk about that. This one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, when you apply for a user interface developer job at Google or other companies, they always ask for a bachelor's of computer science. How can a nano degree fulfill this kind of requirement? I would say through the portfolio that you build, you are showing off the kind of experience that you have. And employers do go and check out um, your GitHub and LinkedIn to see the different projects that you have worked on and what you have achieved um, to be suitable for that kind of a job. Yeah, um, I would say so So larger companies, so Google has lots of employees. Um, the a requirement like a bachelor's of computer science is sort of a way to sort of be a filter on a lot of mm -hmm. people. Um, there are companies out there too that are smaller. Um, so we, I think, the, yeah, we definitely have at least one engineer who didn't even graduate from high school actually. Yes. So um, yeah, I don't think it's an, an impediment personally. Um, and also listings like that, um, you can get past them by knowing someone there as well. So uh, yeah. And if you are part of this nano degree, we are going to help you uh, get those jobs. So do keep that in mind as well. If I can add a little anecdote there, my uh, my college roommate um, graduated with a degree in um, liberal arts and humanities. Um, he did his uh, his uh, bachelor's thesis on the differences in uh, accents in the state of Louisiana. And uh, he he uh, ended up um, actually going into computer programming without a degree. Got a an interview with Google for their their site readiness team, like the the, the team that makes sure that Google has maximum uptime. <laughs> um, and so I I don't think that Google necessarily requires a bachelor uh, of computer science. I, I think that they will look very heavily on experience just as well. Um, so. You know, and they partnered with Udacity to build one of the other nano degrees. So they definitely, you know, and the founder of Udacity is a former Google vice president. So they they know, you know, what uh, what it actually means that you got this from Udacity. Cool. Thank you yeah. for adding that, Nathan. I can add to that a little bit as well. Um, per personally, I haven't really seen that be an issue. I think. Um, Maybe I have a small advantage in just having a general kind of engineering background. I think people like to see that. But, I mean, you know, most job listings will say, a, you know, they want a bachelor's in computer science. But, you know, I think if you apply and they see that you have all this project experience and, I mean, not only that, but you're also, you know, if you're changing fields, you're kind of taking a big leap there. And I think they, I think they appreciate that more than if you, um, you know, were a computer so got a bachelor's in computer science and you know didn't do any outside you know extracurricular projects or really show any other initiative. I think I think you have an advantage there with the nano degree. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. And I am scrolling through questions to find uh, the most upvoted ones. Respond to. There's one with plus six. Apart oh. from HTML, something, something. OK, trying to look for that. <laughs> uh, no? You can select it if you found it. I cannot select it. I don't oh. Have... <laughs> right. Oh. All right. Okay. Oh, there we cool. go. So Sorry. Apart from HTML, JavaScript, CSS, uh, what else can I learn in the nano degree, I assume? I've taken a class using PHP, Bootstrap, and MySQL. MySQL? MySQL. What <laughs> other technologies are covered? So HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are mm -hmm. the building blocks. In addition to that, uh, in your projects, you're going to be working with third-party APIs, uh, the project that um, Ben shared with us. In addition, you will also work with Bootstrap. And Bootstrap is just one of the frameworks for um, so that's a HTML. HTML. That's a CSS framework. Mm -hmm. um, so jQuery mm -hmm. and Knockout Knock are your JavaScript frameworks. Yep. Anything else? <laughs> Not 
one of the. Uh, oh, and Jasmine yes. for uh, testing. Testing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. Ben, did you want to add something or Nathan? Um, there's also, um, you get to. I mean, this isn't necessarily a required part of the nano degree, but um, using like Grunt or Gulp or other um, build tools is something else you you can kind of pick up and is um, um, sort of an extra credit on some of the projects. For sure. All right. So uh, we're at seven, seven. o'clock. Um, we'd like to thank all of you who are still tuned in for watching. Hopefully it was valuable for you and will help you make a better informed decision about whether you'd like to do the nano degree or not. Um, yeah, anything else? Any last words? So I think, um, yeah, is there a survey we'd like to ask you to fill out? I believe so. Okay, and that's about it, I think. Okay. So we're going to star the the question that has a link to the survey, and then that's about it. Okay. All right. We can find it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're trying to look for that question right now. Okay. Uh, fourth okay. from the top. Fourth from the top, you said? It's on my screen. One, two, three. All right. Yeah. Ah, right. there yeah. we go. There we go. All right, I just start that question or the link to the survey. We'll also post it to the event um, mm -hmm. to sort of digest. Yep. And yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, and we really hope this will help you make uh, a better and a more informed decision. Um, ben and Nathan, thank you so much. I'm, I'm very sure that our viewers found both of you helping us out over here to be very Helpful. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm struggling. <laughs> Do you have yes. any parting thoughts? Right. The, the, the nano degree I, I felt has been a fantastic experience for me. Um, it, it's, it's very self-driven. You get out of it what you put in. Um, if you're willing to put in the work, you're going you're gonna to have fun. You're going to learn a lot. Right. Thank you, Nathan. Yeah. Um, basically, I, I would say pretty much the same thing. Since it is a self-paced um, and you're kind of working on your own, you do have to be self-motivated, I think, to, to really be successful. But I think if this is something you like and you're driven, I think it's really pretty much a tremendous value. I don't know if there's anything else really like it out there. Okay. Cool. Thank you. All right. Goodbye. <laughs>